RL circuit. In the circuit shown in figure, find the reading in each ammeter and voltmeter. Part A just after switch S is closed and part B after S has been closed a very long time. Okay, so looking at this circuit, we have three resistors and an inductor. The inductance is 15 millihenries connected to a, a voltage source, 50 volts voltage being supplied. Now, what we call V2, the voltage, it's, it's the voltage across the inductor. It is related to the current that flows through the inductor as inductance L, DIL, DT, which would be in this case the current I2 that flows through this ammeter. Now, if I have a sudden if I have a sudden increase in current, LDIDT, so DIDT is infinite, this would imply I would obtain an infinite voltage across the inductor. So therefore, this is not allowed. So the current uh, that flows through the inductor does not change instantaneously. So in other words, we can say that the current through an inductor does not change instantaneously. All right. So, uh, at t is equal to 0 minus, before this uh, switch was closed, the circuit was not connected to a battery, therefore the current that flows through the inductor was 0 amperes. So I can note here that the ammeter 2 reading I2 at t is equal to 0 minus, before the switch was closed, must be equal to its value at t is equal to 0 plus, because the current flows through an inductor does not change instantaneously, this is 0 amperes. So the ampere meter 2 reading, which is the current I2 that flows through this inductor, is 0 amperes in part A. Okay, what is the voltage... Uh, V3, voltage V3, across the 75 ohm resistance, because the current in this branch is zero, that voltage will be equal to V3 is equal to I2 multiplied with 75 ohms. So this will give me the voltmeter 3 reading to be zero volts. Okay, so that's equivalent to saying I have no resistance here, this, there is zero volts, and the current that flows through this branch is uh, zero, or, or I could just say that there is, uh, this part is open circuit. Okay, so that means the voltage that appears here will be zero. So I can either uh, show it this way with I2 is equal to 0, I2 at 0 plus is equal to 0 amperes, or I could say this part is disconnected at t is equal to 0 plus, it's open circuited. Okay, so that's my uh, vision of the t is equal to 0 plus uh, circuit. Now, uh, what is the voltage V2 and V4? V2 and V4 will be the same, right, because there is no voltage drop uh, on this branch, uh, on the resistor, that means this inductor is connected uh, parallel to this uh, resistor. So you can see that this voltage and this voltage will be the same. So if I use my uh, voltage divider equation, so voltage divider, equation, then I can see that 
V2, which is going to be equal to V4 since there is no voltage drop across the resistor, 75 ohms, V3 is equal to 0. Uh, this is basically the voltage being shared by 50 volts being shared by 100 ohms and 50 ohms. So it is 50 times uh, 50 divided by total resistance, 150 because they're connected in series. So V2 and V4 are equal. It is 50 times 50, 50 ohms times the 50 volts divided by the total resistance, 100 plus 50 connected in series. So this gives me 2500 divided by 150 zeros cancel and if i calculate this i find the voltmeter 2 and voltmeter 4 reading equal to 16.7 watts okay so here i have noted that uh, the total resistance for the series connection of 100 ohms and 50 ohms is 150 ohms all right so what is the uh, reading on ampere meter one and ampere meter three since there is no current flowing through this branch ampere meter one and ampere meter three readings should be the same so ampere meter one which reads current i1 is equal to i3 the ampere meter three reading so i1 is equal to i3 since there is no current i2 so with that i can see that this current the only current that flows in the circuit i1 equals i3 is this voltage divided by the total resistance here 150 ohms so it is going to be epsilon divided by r total which is uh going to be I1 equals I3 equals 50 volts divided by 150 ohms. So I will see that I1 equals I3 equals 0 0.33 amperes. All right. Now, what is the voltage reading on the 100 ohm resistor? using ohm's law v1 is going to be equal to uh, 100 ohms multiplied by the current uh, 0 0.33 amps v1 is going to be 33 watts or uh, I could use the voltage divider formula again, 100 times 50 divided by 150, which gives me 33.3 uh, .3 watts. So to be more precise, uh, and these two voltages, V1 and V2 should add up to 50. So that's what I see here, 13.3 plus 16.7. Uh, th these two voltages, V1 and V4, add up to 50 volts okay so i have found uh, the voltmeter readings v1 33.3 volts v2 is uh, v equal to v4 which is 16.7 volts v3 is zero the three currents i1 and i3 are equal 0 0.33 amps the, the second current i2 is uh, zero amps all right now what happens as t goes to infinity after s has been closed for a very long time as t goes to infinity di dt will go to zero i will reach a steady state current the voltage across the inductor vl is which is l di dt now becomes zero volts because i have a constant current so i can see that in this case v2 reading will be equal to zero volts so when i wait for a long time so the equivalent circuit basically we can replace this 
inductor with a short circuit, uh, there is no voltage drop here, the current will uh, flow through the 75 ohms and create a voltage drop uh, V3. Okay, now what do I have in this situation? 75 ohms is parallel, is in parallel connection with 50 ohms in series connection with 100 ohms. So the equivalent resistance for the circuit becomes 50 ohms parallel with 75 ohms in series with 100 ohms. So that gives me the equivalent resistance 50 times 75 divided by 125, 50 plus 75 plus 100. This is 30 plus 100, which is 100. 30 ohms that's the equivalent resistance <clears throat> now what is the current reading on ampere meter one i1 so this is the current that flows through this equivalent resistance 100 ohms in series connection with 50 and 75 parallel connection so that means ampere meter one reading will be equal to i1 which is 50 volts flowing through the equivalent resistance of 130 ohms. So I can see that my current reading on ampere meter one will be 0 0.385 amperes. Okay, what will be the voltage reading on 100 ohms? It's I1 times R. So V1 reading will be equal to 100 times I1, which is 38.5 volts. What will be the reading on uh, V2? V2 we said is already 0 volts and then we will have V3 and V4 readings the same. So V3 equals V4 will be the equivalent resistance of this 30 ohms in series connection with 100 ohms so that's voltage divider 30 times 50 volts divided by 130 which means v3 and v4 readings are the same which is 11.5 volts and another way to see this these two voltages uh, the voltage here Uh, the voltage here plus the voltage V1 should add up to 50 volts. So 38.5 volts plus 11.5 volts. So here uh, I'm going to do KCL. That's the current I2. This is the current I3. All right. In the equivalent circuit now so here uh, I have used the voltage divider equation to calculate V2 and V4 what about ampere meter 2 reading I2 I2 this is basically V3 divided by uh, 75 ohms which is 11.5 divided by 75 ohms so that gives me i2 um, so here in this circuit this is basically acting like a short circuit voltage is zero okay so I2 will be equal to 0 0.153 amperes. And using Kirchhoff current law, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Uh, that is KCL. I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Kirchhoff current law. So this tells me the ampere meter 3 reading I3 is I1 
minus I2, which is 0 0.385 amps minus 0 0.153 amps. And that will give me I3 is equal to 0 0.232 amperes at steady state. Okay, so I have found uh, V1, 38.5 volts, V2 is 0, V3 and V4 are equal to 11.5 volts. Current 1, I1 is uh, 0 0.385 amps. Current 2, I2 is 0 0.153 amps. And I3 was calculated using Kirchhoff current law to be 0 0.232 amps. So I3 times 50 should also be equal to V4, right? So if I multiply this by 50, I should be getting 11.5 volts. That's another way to find this current. Okay, so uh, we have an RL circuit. Uh, there is a switch which connects this circuit to a battery. And we see that uh, when the switch, right after the switch is closed, because the current in the inductor, flowing through the inductor cannot change instantaneously, uh, we will have uh, a zero current flowing through the inductor because that's the current value at t is equal to zero minus. So uh, with that, the no current flowing through this branch implies no voltage drop across 75 ohms, so I get zero volts here as well. And the voltage across the inductor becomes now equal to the voltage across the 50 ohm resistor uh, and with no current flowing through this branch I have 100 ohm in series connection with 50 ohms from which I can use voltage divider formula to find V2 and V4 uh, to be 50 times 50 divided by 150 equivalent resistance and the current I1 is equal to I3 because there is no current flowing here that's from Kirchhoff current law at this a junction and that is the uh, the voltage divided by the total resistance epsilon over r total 0 0.33 amps and the voltage drop across 100 ohms is this current multiplied by the resistance or 100 times 50 over 150 voltage divider formula 33.3 volts and these two voltages indeed add up to 50 volts using Kirchhoff voltage law when the switch is closed for a long time, the current is, becomes a constant at steady state. That, that means the voltage across the inductor becomes zero. So we can replace this by a short circuit here. The current will flow through the 75 ohms resistance uh, and 75 ohms becomes parallel to 50 ohms in series with 100 ohms, equivalent resistance 130 ohms. So the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance gives me the current I1, 0 0.385 amps, multiplied by the resistance here gives me V1, 38.5 volts, and V3 and V4 are the same, V2 is zero. Uh, that is the equivalent resistance 30 ohms, times 50 divided by 130 coolant resistance for this part, 11.5 uh, volts, and these two should add up to 50, and indeed they add up to 50 volts. I2 is the voltage V3 divided by 75 ohms, 0 0.153 amps, and then finally we can use Kirchhoff current law at this junction to find I3, which is 0 0.232 amps.